Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Circus Electrique. This is a sponsored video so there will be a link in the description of this video if you want to check the game out yourself. Huge thank you to the creators of this game for sponsoring me whose name I have completely forgotten. However, that's not important because what is important is that this is quite a fun game and I'm going to show you off all of its features. I do have a save file here that is about six days in, but I'm going to go ahead and start a new game because it'd be kind of fun to show you everything from the beginning. Fundamentally, um, the simplest way that I can explain to you what this game is, is it's a story driven game, very much so in the vein of Darkest Dungeon. But it's also set in sort of a Victorian, late Victorian era, sort of the circus kind of steampunky it's hard to exactly describe it because i actually don't know the setting too well myself but fundamentally it's kind of it's it's very british circusy and intriguey and victorian is kind of how it feels to me i might have gotten that era wrong now i'm not a huge person when it comes to story for games so i am going to be skipping most of the story but there is a wonderful story and it is presented in a really nice way if indeed that is something you like i do recommend it now we're going to start off in control of our little clown here and the strongman um, i can't remember what the actual name of the clown yeah he's a clown and then this guy is a strongman and basically we will take actions there are a variety of things that we can do for example we can do a ball throw here this will deal 9 to 12 health damage and decrease the enemy's morale slash devotion by 5%. If an enemy's health or morale reaches zero, they will die or flee the battle, depending on what goes on. So we're going to do a ball throw boing. We do 12 damage. He resists. He takes minus five morale damage. And those of you who are familiar to uh, Darkest Dungeon will recognize this kind of combat. You have four spots for units and then you take turns. Kind of, there's an initiative order. People act in different orders and stuff like that. And so the game, this is basically like a tutorial battle. We're teaching you, okay, so you can move your unit forward a battle because the moves that your units have access to is dependent upon their position in the battle. So for example, I wanted to move Balthazar forward a slot because now he will have access to some of his moves that are only accessible in the forward slot. And we're kind of skipping a lot of the tutorial attack. So I'm going to do the tutorial in text. Uh, you shouldn't take much damage on this first battle because this is all just like teaching you how to play. So we're going to go ahead and do a front blow and you can see here it's only activatable if Balthazar, the strong man, is in the front position and it hits the first two enemies or it's capable of hitting the first two enemies. If there was a little um, red line between the two circles that would say it would hit both of them. But yeah let's go ahead and take out this first little bobby and they're on like little weird um, unicycle like motorized unicycles it's it's very cool the game is incredibly visually stimulating i really really like the aesthetic and style i can totally understand that it might not land with everybody the one thing i will say is playing without the tutorial pop-ups i feel like i'm missing a lot of the voice lines that were there before oh we missed ouch that's unfortunate but yeah we're just going to continue doing ball throw and bonking this little policeman on the head until we can completely defeat him all right, we defend it. I think there's there's a variety of outcomes to any action you can do in the game. For example, you could increase morale, you could increase your defense, you can lower your enemy's defense, you could increase the amount of damage you do, you can buff, you could debuff. There's so much you could do. So these guys gained one experience, we gained 10 shillings, two food, and a little bit of circus fame. Uh, we'll explain all of those things when the time comes. There's also a bit of story here. I'm going to go ahead and skip the story. The story is reasonably interesting and worth talking about, but I'm much more of a gameplay guy, and I think a lot of my audience is too. And I think if you're an a story kind of person you don't want the story spoiled so i'm just going to tell you how the game actually plays but it's, it, there's a lot of really cool characters we're basically playing as the lady there who has a lion and she's kind of you know running her own little agenda doing things that perhaps the circus master is not a big fan of so uh we now have access to the trade and we can recruit fire blowers so we're going to go ahead over to the train and then go ahead and recruit a fire blower that's going to cost us those 10 shillings that we just got and she is a new character who has new abilities and new stuff this, of course, will immediately trigger a new battle so we can go ahead and show off this new character. These are all kind of introductory stuff. Now, she's capable of hitting every single person in the entire battle on the enemy team with this ability here, Fire Blow. You can see here it's got red circles and the line goes through all of them, which means when I use this attack, it will hit everyone. So she does a reasonable amount of damage to everyone. We can either do a ball throw, we could do a clown care, which would heal himself. I don't think we need to do a clown care. We, we could move him forward two slots, taunt for one turn and increase his devotion. Devotion is... Uh, per you could permanently increase devotion which has effects inside and outside of battle i think i might do a trumpet boost here actually if we take a look at this guy this um mime guy he's a busker he's actually really close to having his morale break he's only got 10 devotion so if i hit him with two ball throws that should get him off the battlefield so i'll go ahead and take that as my option the electro baton hits me let's see we've got a physical attack 
20% precision penalty, so there's quite a good chance that we miss. Or we could just go for a big physical attack. I think I'll just take the big physical attack because it's the higher chance to actually hit. I like reliable attacks rather than gambling attacks. All right, he defended. Perfect. Now, we can do another fire attack or... We could do a fire throw and decrease the devotion of this guy. Actually, I could have gotten him out of the battle immediately. So he fled and fleeing is just another way to kill enemies. You get their devotion or their health to zero and they will leave the battle. Let's see if you can get a kill here. Hey, perfect. Right. Brilliant. Strong man is through. Everyone picks up a little bit of experience. We pick up some more resources, a little bit more circus fame, and we shall continue. Go ahead and skip the old story again. Now we've just unlocked the sleeping cart, which is how you heal your people in between battles. So we've just found Yvonne here and she's a little bit hurt. So we're going to go put her in here. That's going to cost us one meat to get her healed up. And while she's healing up, we'll go ahead and go through another battle. So let's have a look at the morale here. This guy's got 23 morale. You've got 21 morale. So it would require two fire throws and a balloon here to get this guy to leave the battle. It might be faster just to do raw damage, in all honesty. So I think I'm going to go for just fire blow here, because I think I can kill these guys faster by just doing damage to them. And now I'm hoping for a high roll on this ball throw. Okay, that was actually a fairly low roll, so now we're going to have a hard time getting him off the field of battle. That's unfortunate. All right, we took a little bit of damage, or we actually defended perfectly. Ooh, and he swapped position. There's the Electro Baton. Now, we'll go ahead and do a basic physical attack. I would like to hit this guy. Yeah, I have a basically 100% chance of killing him. That's perfect, ideal. So now this guy has 14 health. I should be able to kill him fairly easily with just a fire blow and a balloon throw. This is supposed to be teaching us about the battle mechanics, like you can do things like a trumpet buff, which boosts our precision, and we could do taunt and all this sort of stuff. I'm kind of more concerned with getting to the actual meat and potatoes of the gameplay, as it were. Perfect. So uh, this is your character, by the way, uh, the lady on the bike. So another little bit of experience. Balthazar has not yet leveled two food, 30 money, and we are good to go on to the next step. So this is what you're going to see every time you actually pass a day. You're going to see how many resources you have how your characters have changed, how they've taken damage, how their resources have increased, what they've consumed, what experience they've gained, how their morale has changed. All the effects of your characters are going to be summarized after a day. Now, Yvonne has joined our circus, which is fantastic. And they want me to recruit three new performers. So I will go ahead and recruit Pablo, Maria and Caesar into my circus. And the reason that we're doing that is so we can go ahead and do the circus tent. We've also unlocked the circus, the escape artist. I think we'll be able to recruit another one of them tomorrow. We also have a new circus show. Uh, the circus show is kind of like your your, your daytime action or your yeah so basically you explore during the daytime and then you do your like circus show or nighttime you explore during the nighttime basically there's a whole there's a whole cycle to a day and you do like a road show so here's a village road show i'm gonna go ahead and set this up and now various characters have affinities for various slots so you can see here pablo he has the blue left arrow which means he's good in the opening act maria has the pink down arrow which means she's good as the supporting act and caesar has the orange up arrow which means he's good at the main event depending on how well these characters match these abilities and how good their skills are and I believe how well they mesh with each other. For example, Caesar here, he has this green fire symbol, which means he likes working with Maria because she is a fire thrower. And Maria has the green horn symbol, which means she likes working with clowns. And the clown has the green fire symbol. So these guys all love working together, which means we're getting a two star performance, which we'll kind of we'll talk about that in a moment. And um, but let's say I were to like take Caesar and put him into the opening act. OK, that would actually lower the performance. You can see this green bar went down because these guys are in suboptimal locations. I think I, I can show you a little bit more about this, but essentially it's a, just basically it's you're going to do this once a day essentially every single day and you could choose your rewards i could choose to get cash i can choose to get entertainment is resources and then complexity is experience so you can kind of choose how, what kind of rewards you get i'm going to get a little bit of re resources and a little bit of cash from this show so there we go the event will take place after the next battle so basically you set up your circus show and then you go into a battle and then the battle and the circus show will resolve which is just the kind of basic gameplay loop that you're going to be doing. You're going to be upgrading characters and stuff. I'll show you. Maybe I think Balthazar will level up after this fight, so I'll be able to show you that. But now we have a full squad of units. We have uh, the Fireblower of Bertha. So we only have access to two of their abilities. We're still in like the tutorial area. Let's have a look. This mime has only 10 morale. So I'm going to go ahead and do a fire throw because that will decrease his devotion by 10%, thus knocking him out of the battle. Perfect. There he goes. He has fled. I don't know if there's actually a difference between making a unit flee or so on. And I think if a unit kills someone, they will get a little bit of morale and morale is persistent. Uh, so let's have a look. What's your morale? Your morale is 19. 
I think I'm going to go ahead and do a trumpet boost. This will give all of my units plus 5% precision and 20% morale. Uh, temporary morale. Now, morale increases the amount of damage that your spells do. So you can see here, if I'm hovering over this, it de deals 8 to 10 damage, but it also says plus 2. That plus 2 is because her morale is high. There we go. Release. Zip. Big ol' zapper. Now, this lady here, the posh woman, she actually has really high defense. I did not mean to actually hit her, but I did just one-shot her. So, usually they have pretty high defense in, in the battles that I've kind of experienced before. So, we could do a fire whirl. Let's see, Fire Whirl does a lot of damage. Or we can do Fire Whip, Fire Whirl. So generally attacks that hit singles are going to do more damage. 30% chance to burn. So this attack would not kill. This attack would kill. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the kill. And then she should get a tiny bit of morale from getting a kill? No, apparently not. Okay, so maybe it's only if you make enemies flee that you get bonus morale. But Balthazar should level now. Right? 90 gold, 90, 90 cash, 16 food, 5 skill upgraders, a little bit of circus fame. Yeah, high devotion makes characters extremely effective in battle. Balthazar has in fact leveled up and we gained some resources. Everything is going well. Uh, so now we want to go to the... Where do we want to go? Is it the sleeping cart where we upgrade characters? No, 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 no. Um, how do I level up Balthazar? Ah, oh, yeah, you click on him. Okay, so Balthazar is able to be leveled up. I'm going to go ahead and click the level up button and thus all of his stats will increase slightly. And now we can go ahead and choose to upgrade his circus act. So this is the ability that he uses when you are going to actually do your circus act. So I can go ahead and upgrade this. Now, he doesn't love f fire blowers. Let's see, how do they auto assign it? Um, each of these things will have a different effect on the outcome of it. Uh, or no, each of these things, every circus act has a requirement in the amount of fun, the amount of thrill, the amount of laugh, the amount of amazement. So you want to have generally a good spread of these abilities. So I'd say I'd put one point into everything. That'll just give us a good spread. And then I'll focus on what he's good on, on both amazement and thrill. Just kind of bring his baseline up a little bit so that his points are quite good. And then I might start specializing him in a particular direction. Now, we also have skill upgraders and this tonic that I forget the name of. So we can go through and we can upgrade his skills individually. He also has ultimates, by the way. When Balthazar is standing on slot 3 to 4, he has a 10% increase to his critical chance. And also when he's standing on slot 1 to 2, he's immune to movement effects. These are kind of passive abilities. Um, so we could upgrade, for example, his show off. Uh, by upgrading it, it would give him slightly more damage boost. We could upgrade, I, I think upgrading his direct damage spells, because this is plus two damage just across the board. Generally speaking, I think most of your upgrades are going to come from leveling. The skill upgrades don't really, they don't really make that much of a difference, to be honest. They, they kind of help, but you, you can kind of get by with not upgrading skills. But I'm going to go ahead and upgrade his basic attack because a little bit of extra damage could be the difference between a one shot and a two shot. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and do ground shatter because this is a devotion attack that attacks everyone. And so the dodge reduction chance would be quite useful. However, it does reduce Balthazar's devotion. So you do have to keep that in mind. And then otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade his base. I'm just going to upgrade everything that deals direct damage because this is just to, this is ba this this ability right here is basically just to get his devotion back. And so yeah, Balthazar has leveled up. He's, you know, he's quite strong. He's protection, he's initiative, defense, all these stats matter. He's a 2% chance to crit. He's a 4% chance to dodge, 83% precision, a little bit of base damage, so on and so forth. His morale is good. And that's him upgraded. Uh, so embark for the streets of London. So this is where we actually get to do the exploration phase of the game. So the ringmaster is kind of upset that we're going out and doing things. Um, but we can set up an exploration team. And the map here has a variety of things that can happen here. Now, you're only going to get to do one fight per day, but you can continue to explore until you hit a fight. And we're trying to get over here to London Bridge, where there will be a fight there as well. So, for example, uh, let's go ahead and assemble a team. I'm going to bring Balthazar in the first position. Actually, do you know what I should do? I should totally have set up my circus act first, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just do this. Um, I will bring Yvonne. Let's see, where does she best fit? So, Grok is best in the first two slots. Bertha is best in the back two slots. So, I might set up like this, the way that the game kind of had it set up, because that might be the way to go. And then we're going to head over here to this loot crate, pick this up. And what did we find? We found a little bit of resources and some components for crafting. That's ideal. I haven't actually got to interact with the crafting system yet. So that's like one of the few things in the game that I haven't quite yet done. So we could go over here and fight a girl and a busker. Or we could fight a busker and a constable. So the battle condition would be day, no special conditions, no special conditions. It all depends on the way that we want to go on the map. And um, there's circus enthusiasts over here. There's an interview. I think I'm going to go to the right. Is that what I want to do? Do I want to go to the right or do I want to go left? To be honest with you, I don't really know the ramifications of going either way. But if I go to the right, I get to go talk to Uncle Randy, which is something that might be interesting. I don't know if we'll be able to even get there. Tonight's circus show isn't going to set itself up. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our show. We're going to set up another... A uh, sideshow, I think it was. I don't know what this is called. What is it? Ah, this is a village road show. So this is just a fairly basic show. We'll put Pablo, Maria, 
and Caesar back at it. I would love to get to three stars, but we'll just have to accept that. And now we can go ahead and get a little bit more cash, a little bit more components. That's fine. Now, every time you do a show, it starts to lose novelty, which means you get start to get less rewards for it and it's like harder to perform it well. So yeah, let's go to the right because I get to talk to Uncle Randy. Badly injured performance can be saved by using the flea action. Awesome. Press any key. So I'm hoping to get through this battle relatively unscathed and relatively quickly. Alrighty, brilliant. I really like the style and look of the game. It has a very, I, I don't know, I just, I love the mixture of the 3D art and the 2D art. It just seems wonderful. We, have, we got some shillings, we got some circus fame, we got some components, as well as skill upgrades. Nobody leveled yet. That's not important. And um, we didn't take too much damage. We took a little bit of damage. I might have to put her into the heal tank. And that's going to be like the whole important part of the game is juggling how you spend your time with your people. But you can see there's also a news articles, all sorts of newspapers, great stuff to read. Really, really fun. Kind of gives you an overview of what happened during the day, you know, how the reports are going it's kind of just a it's a fun and immersive way to show what happened at the end of the day i know it's really really cute it's basically just this screen but kind of like a little bit more interesting so we managed to gain a few things we lost a little bit of food she took a bit of damage that's okay you took a bit of damage brock is still healthy though she's a little bit low i might swap her out for maria yeah i think i'm pretty happy with that i think i should go over to the trade new circus show draft available can i do upgrades yet because i really want to upgrade this i need to get the circus level two because i would love to recruit another um, escape artist, but I want to wait until I can upgrade that. So in the sleeping cart, I'm going to go ahead and send Bertha in here to sleep for a night. Yes, she will be lost, unfortunately. Um, and then we need to think about, <sighs> no, I actually, I need to recruit someone. If someone's going into the back to tanks, I need to recruit somebody. So let's see. Uh, we've got Ellen, we've got Deborah, Sylvie, Sigrid, and Joanna. I'm going to take Sigrid here. I think between the two. Oh, she is cheating death. Or escape in the air. Ooh, this is a wild card escape, though. That's actually really good. I think just because she has this wild card, I'm going to take her. The wild card is just better. So I can't recruit any of these guys. That's fine. We've got our recruitment. Set up a new show in the circus tent. And we should have access to the new show, the London City Circus. Uh, so in terms of the main event, let's see if we can come up with something. How about... Pablo, Caesar, and Joanna. Okay, so these guys do not get along particularly well. So Caesar does not like clowns. What if I swap you for this... I have no after event people, so perhaps Balthazar will suit this better. Two stars only. I would have three stars because I'm getting one star from the chemistry and then th two stars from the devotion. Three stars isn't bad, in all honesty. Uh, we do meet the requirements for the mission. I don't think I can really get much better than this because I don't have anyone who can perform the after show. And Pablo's the only one who can do the pre-show. So I think this is the best setup I'm going to get. Now, the question is, do I want to increase complexity to gain experience for my performers or do I want to just gain resources I think in my head resources are kind of like how I'm going to advance my entire party whereas this will just only advance these guys and these guys I could in theory put one into both you know but personally I think it's far more important to actually like specialize and perhaps cash is going to be like really important to upgrade my my um my circus and upgrading your circus might have like you know roster wide dividends but yeah there we go we set up our circus show let's go for another little bit of an explore here uh, we'll go ahead and pick up this loot crate Ooh, I need to set up my exploration team. So we've got Grok and we've got Yvonne. We also have Caesar. He can act from here and we'll put Maria. So we'll kind of backfill in our new guys and experiment with the new new roster. There we go. We picked up a little bit of loot, some components and all that jazz. Let's see here. We've got a clash or a clash. Now the question is, do I want to go for a mystery event or a loot crate? You know what? I think it'd be more fun to go for the mystery event. So let's go over here. And while our roster looks familiar, it is quite different because we have a different fire breather and a different strong man. So we're up against people with relatively high morale. This is going to be a damage battle, I think. Uh, let's see. We have fire blow. We have fire whip 30 percent chance to deal extra damage or we could do a fire trap let's see fire ring deals 20 ish damage places a trap 100 percent trap deals for 15 damage so this just seems quite good who has the lowest health these guys are actually relatively tough we're gonna have to try and get these guys off the field of battle focus firing seems like it could be quite good the, the sooner we get a character off the battlefield the sooner he's not um you know, dealing damage back to us, which means we take less damage, which means we could do more. Yeesh, yeah, I'm taking a lot more damage than I would like to be taking right now. Uh, another seven damage, unfortunate. So we managed to get through this. We missed an attack. Oh, well. But we ended up with slightly more devotion than we should have. The enemy didn't take too many actions. Grok got hurt quite a bit. Nobody's leveled. We got a bit of money. We got a bit of stuff. Right, brilliant. Another day, another newspaper. Perfect. We got a nice bit of resources, all this sort of jazz. I'm going to go ahead and skip through that just so I can show you off more of the game. Ah, here we go. This is a big moment for us. Our circus has leveled up. We gained enough circus reputation or whatever it is. I think anyway. Yeah, yeah. The circus leveled up over here. Everyone's leveling. Grok took a lot of damage there. Otherwise, most of my party 
did not take that much damage. A little bit of a morale gain actually from these guys from doing their um, doing circus act. So it, it tends to be that your morale will actually trend upwards, it seems. Oh yeah, by the way, the circus also has a mad scientist and that's why it's all kind of like technological and stuff. That's this guy right here. He has, he, I think he might be one of my favorite characters in the game. But our circus reached level two. This is going to allow us to start to upgrade buildings. For example, we could upgrade the train to level two. And what this will allow us to do is we'll increase the applicant's max level by plus two and reduce the recruitment cost. So this will pay dividends over the course of the game to get these buildings upgraded. So tomorrow, the next day, these recruits should have a higher level. I could obviously refresh it right now, but I don't want to recruit anyone because I also need to come in here and upgrade my sleeping cart because this will increase the number of beds that I have. And these are beds down here. So what does this do? It gives assigned performers 40% of their health back and for morale at the end and has a maximum capacity of eight beds. So we are going to increase the capacity by two beds at the cost of 10 tools. Using this will increase the cost in food as well. So we'll have to start being concerned about our use of resources, but it'll also mean that assigned performers will also regain slightly more morale. So you don't actually need to be in here anymore. I do think Grok should go in here. He's pretty hurt and he could also use the morale to be honest with you. So I'll put Grok in there. Now, I don't know how crafting works. I haven't found that. I assume some of these other buildings will activate later on in the game, but let's go ahead and do a circus event. The novelty on these events is still pretty good. Let's do another London City Circus. So I would probably have to repeat it with the same act, which is really not ideal. I would really like somebody who liked, I would like a main act who liked working with these characters. Maybe I could do a different show. What if I did just the Village Road show again? This time we only have two stars. I'll go ahead and pick up a little bit more cash. We'll go ahead and do it. So yeah, the, the more times you do a show, it'll lose novelty, which I think lowers the rewards. I don't remember exactly how novelty works, to be honest with you. We are going to get a mystery today, which is kind of exciting. I'm going to put Balthazar the fir front, Bertha in here, and then I need a player in the second position. Yvonne can play from second, so then I'll put Johanna in the back. So I'll Going with no clown today. I like that it tells you where the characters can do well in on their character cards. That's something I really, really appreciate about the game. The game just feels like it gives you all the information you need to make good decisions. So it's a mystery defense, a mystery event, self-propelled mobile kibos. Uh, I can insert five shillings to purchase a book. My companions could use a story. So I could buy HG Wells, Invisible Man. This will give me loot and morale. This is a random outcome. Loot and morale, loot and morale. Let's see, Secrets of Conjuring. Magic. Let's do trick for the trick photography one. Uh, nothing about how to make an entire bridge vanish in the book released as a cover, but now I know how to make a woman in a box disappear among many other comic tricks. I feel a bit smarter after rumbling through this. So we should get a little bit of loose. Ah, a little bit of morale. That's perfect. So plus six morale across my party and 16 circus farm. That was actually a really good event for five shillings. Hell yeah. So we're going to be going up against the damsel. Now I believe damsels are the tanks of the enemy and impersonator. All right, let's go. We don't have any, we don't have any items or inventories yet, or inventory items rather, is what I was trying to say there. So two mimes and two damsels. Okay, so she went forward. She also has the inspired and she's taunting. So her devotion is boosted by 30. Let's have a look at the devotion. Enemy's devotion is relatively high. We have a busker here. We have a girl, we have an impersonator. Now an impersonator and a busker seem to be slightly different classes. Yeah, she's a girl, she's a damsel. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two, but it seems, I, I imagine that the damsel is slightly tankier. Let's have a look at the turn order. The girls are going to go relatively early in the turn orders and then my two escape artists see. So she's taunting me, so I am going to have to make an attack against her. I could do an AOE attack. I can't do a devotion attack against her because she's taunting. I could do fire ring. What kind of damage would I get with a top fire ring? She's not targetable with this spell. Okay, how about a fire whirl? So, f so the base damage of this is 26 to 30, okay? To put this in perspective, she will take 14 to 18. So she's really tanky. Really, 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 really quite tanky. Which kind of makes me want to use an AOE attack to maybe spread my damage around. Ooh but this guy will take almost no damage. Damn, okay. Oh, you're immune to taunts. Oh, when Bertha is standing on slot three to four, she gains immunity against taunt effects. Actually, this opens up the battle quite a lot for me here. Now I could go for morale on these guys. I think their morale is a little bit too high. I think I would prefer to do a fire whip on this guy. I can get his health down really, really quickly. And if I can get his health down really quickly, I can get him off the battlefield. So she's inspired and she's taunting and she should rush forward. Now my other characters are not immune to taunts. God, we just do no damage with this. 50% chance to stun, or I could get some extra damage on these guys in the back. I think we're going to have to deal with these guys. Um, so let's start stunning them, I think. 50% chance to stun. She defended, but she did get stunned, so she won't get to act on her next turn. Another escape artist attack. We could do handcuffs, which reduces the devotion. And a 60% chance to make the target unable to attack. That would actually be quite helpful against these posh women. Let's cut her devotion and make her unable to attack. She's also depressed. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, Balthazar is going to be how I kill these guys because he can do big damage to these. 27 to 37. Show off would only boost damage slightly. 
lasts until the end of battle, stack limit 3. So this would boost his damage by 5%, increase his devotion by 5, and reduce all damage suffered. I think I'm going to gamble on the hit. Okay, it is a miss. 73% feels like it should hit pretty regularly, but I am going to miss a lot um, because I just need that damage. I'm going to gamble on big damage. Their defense is just so high that I need it. All right, we're taking an abstract bow. I think I know the strategy that I'm going to employ for this battle now. They don't seem to be high damage, right? She is stunned. Now she's no longer taunting, uh, but you're immune to taunt anyway. So if you do this, 17, 5. God, that really just isn't that much damage. I think I might have to do a devotion attacks against these ladies. Yeah, they just don't take any damage from that fire attack. No, let's try and get rid of the mimes. He did get ignited, that's good. Ooh, she played a shield. Damage reduced by 15%. That's bad news for me. 10 to 12 damage. Now he is on fire, so he's going to take 13 damage, so he should die on his next turn, which means I don't need to really act against him. The lock throw could be good to break his attack. If I if, if I stun him, I would be really happy. Okay, he resisted, unfortunate. I think I'm going to go for a devotion against the second posh woman. God, you really just don't do much damage. Yeah, let's keep reducing her devotion. She resisted, but she is depressed, which will bring her devotion down to maybe more manageable levels. All right, hit her. Come on. There we go. Good hit. 35 damage on a tank. All right, nice. The fire trap triggered. And now this guy, I believe, is in the fire trap as well. So he'll receive ignite over time. Contempt. Perfect. So how do I reduce devotion? I want to reduce her devotion by 10. Perfect. We just need to get it down a little bit more. Okay, she's shielding again. Yeah, let's keep lock throwing on the mimes to keep them stunned. Yeah, God, I just don't have the damage, so I'll keep doing devotion attacks to keep them from attacking. I mean, a 60% chance to prevent the attack is still a decent. She's not in a very good position to really do damage. All right, let's get a big hit. Come on. All right, nice. 36 damage. That's huge. Okay, this is this was, this was a little bit more difficult of a battle than any of the other battles, because I'm taking significant amounts of damage, too, in this battle. All right, there's Contempt. Ooh, 8 morale. Is that temporary? No, that's permanent. All right, let's get the devotion attack off on this lady. No, I think I might be able to get her down to fleeing level. Okay, we dodged her umbrella thrust. That's perfect. But that did move her to the back of the party. That might mess me up, actually. I think I might have to do a chain grab on the mime. Oh, no, I can't. I'll do a lock throw on the mime. It's the most efficient way I can get damage and to remove enemy actions from the board. Okay, please make her flee. Perfect, right. So the depression made her flee. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And now we don't need a lot of damage on this guy. We just need to hit. Nice. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for the missing attacks. That might have been a bit of a mistake. It's hard to know like what percentage chance to hit makes it worth it to do that kind of thing. But that's going to be something you get. Uh, you get a sense of as you continue to play the game. But overall, this battle didn't go that poorly for me. I mean, I did lose a bit of morale. But I would say generally, um, relatively okay result. A new newspaper, London Bridge, simply vanishes. <laughs> All right, that's kind of cool. So this is this is the story one. This will like give you like a little bit of the background of the story. All right, so we could see a little bit of food. We used a lot of these. Otherwise, though, we kind of came out on top. We took a lot of damage on our heroes, which I'm not a huge fan of. We're slowly leveling up. A new circus, the House of Horror. Cool, cool, cool. I should also look into maybe recruiting some new people. Ah, so the House of Horror. Uh, selected performance is a fun, amazing, thrill, laugh values meet the expectations. So we just want to get this up to the level. So let's just start. Oh, let's just start kind of doing basic things. Bertha likes the clown. You're happy there. And the main act, do I want to go Caesar? Caesar gets us up to three stars. What about Balthazar? Balthazar brings us down, but brings us up on the star count. Ah, so I need to replace Maria. Can I swap Maria and Bertha? Ooh, that's even worse chemistry. The chemistry is just bad here, honestly. And between these two. Can I change that? What if I changed Yvonne to here? That would lower the morale. So I think Balthazar needs to be in here so I can get a five-star performance. A five-star performance is pretty decent, actually. It's going to use up a lot of my characters, but I'll take this. Now, we do also have a spotlight, and we can add this. This is an item that you can add. So if I add this to it, it'll automatically give us plus one of this performance value. Whatever this one is. Is it, uh... Entertainment, which is kind of cool because you can see there's a lot of slots here. We can eventually fill this out. So if I were to max out the rewards, I would get 21 cash or I could max out the experience and get a ton of experience. Or do I want circus fame? I feel like leveling up my circus might be like really, really cool. Plus, I will still get some components like, yeah, let's maximize this for entertainment value. Get a bunch of circus fame. It's a fresh new show. It'd be good to explore it. Um, one thing we definitely need to do is to come in here and Yvonne has taken enough damage to be worth swapping in here. And I also need to go over to the train and start recruiting new people. Let's refresh. We've got some level twos in here. Uh, I would like Thora. She seems pretty good. She is a down arrow though, which I don't need many of. A baton twirling Bridget seems like she could fit. She is a wild card and she doesn't like strongmen, but that's fine. She likes ventriloquists. 
Oh, you actually really like Strongman. So yeah, I think Thora is going to join my party. And I think Bridget's going to join my party. So I'm pretty heavy on the fire breathers and escape artists, but that's okay. Artisan is unlocked. Okay, huge. This is huge poggers. So now we can, I think we can finally craft things. So Cola will increase devotion and spotlights will add entertainment stars. So I definitely want to craft a spotlight that uses glass lens, sparkers, transformers, screws and tools. Let's craft one. Oh, building upgrade. Let's have a look here. Smoke, bandage, explosive bottle. I'm going to spend the money. So smoke adds a complexity star. Explosive bottle. Not enough components to craft. This deals 36 damage and a 30% chance to deal 36 damage to the user. Uh, cola increases devotion. Bandages increases health. I'm going to craft a cola. And I will also craft a spotlight. My logic of these games is just to craft relentlessly. Craft everything you can. If you can craft something, craft it. You may as well, like... And, and the reason for that is, is because often you'll just sit around with stuff in your inventory that never gets used. So you want to avoid that. Let's put Grok into the healer. Let's have a look at our next performance. So we do have another House of Horror. The London City Circus novelty has recovered. So we could do that again. Although I won't be able to use a spotlight for it. But that's fine. So I don't remember exactly how novelty works. Uh, let's have a look here. Performers... Show drafts, select a program, novelty. Spectators get bored, low novelty hinders its maximum potential. Losing a battle doubles the current show's novelty reduction. Yeesh. So I could probably get away with another one of these if I wanted to repeat it. Ooh, main event, double effect for clowns. Let's just see how we can fill things out. If we did this again, it would just about be another five star performance, which is honestly quite good. Is this how I want to do things? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's use another spotlight. We crafted it for a reason. Do I really want this experience that bad? I think I'll go for experience less so. I like now that I'm actually starting to get a spread of resources. I like that. That's cool. Rather than getting a single thing, you get kind of a variety of resources from each event. And I suppose we'll go out onto the streets again. Another mystery event. Oh, I need to fill up my slots. I don't think I can do any more crafting. Um, Grok, Bertha, Pablo. Let's have a little think here. Pablo doesn't want to be there. We do double clown build. I haven't taken these clowns out. Bertha could use a level. Grok could use a level. Let's do the mystery event. I'm surprised we don't see this more often these so I can... Uh, what are the victims? So we can give this guy 10 shillings. Ooh, this would cause a fight. I can give a cola. I'm going to give him 10 shillings because I have a lot of shillings. And so what do we get from this? Hopefully morale. Okay, a little bit of morale. Five morale across the party. A little bit of circus fame. That's good. So we could do circus enthusiasts. Ooh, impromptu performance. That's kind of a fun idea. Or a loot crate. Let's do an impromptu performance. This is a new event that we haven't seen before. Ooh. So, we choose a performer with a high enjoyment rating, who is Grok. Spin the Wheel of Fortune for another number. If the sum of two is higher than the target value we win, then we can choose to take the reward or risk it all. Oh, this is easy. We already have a six. The goal is four. I don't see any minus numbers here. Boom. I almost hit the 10. I think we can go all the way. The goal is still four. I would like to get this experience and stuff. <gasps> the goal went up. And I need a new performer. Oh, sh shoot. All right, Pablo, you're in. We won. Do we think we can do it again? I think I would have a good chance of doing it again, but I'm just going to go ahead and claim these rewards and leave it at that. I think it's e just leave it at that. We're good to go. We got everything we needed. We can continue. Let's do an interview. This might be a story event. Okay, so that's a story event. I, I, I don't want to show too much of the story. I want you guys to discover that yourselves. And now we are just two days away from actually getting to London Bridge and figuring out why it has disappeared. This is going to be the final battle of this. Who do I want to bring? I think this team is honestly fine. Bring two cola, two bandages. That should be enough. Plus a little bit of passive healing from Grok. Why are you zzz? Does that mean you're sleeping? Oh, she's bored. So she's losing morale every day. So I need to bring her on a mission to prevent boredom. Let's pop Maria in there. And I suppose I'll bring Joanna then. If she's bored, she needs to get out of that boredom. I really don't want to lose morale on my people. I'm pretty I'm pretty confident I can take this battle on. I have two healing items and two morale items. You know, and, and like, if you consider it in terms of morale, if I hadn't have brought these two characters with me on this mission, oh, there's going to be a story here. Okay, so, but I'm not going to like spoil the storyline, um, but we are going to fight Eugene, the mad scientist who has apparently disappeared the London Bridge. And look at the graphics in the background. This is wonderful. Really, really cool. Uh, but we'll... Wow, he's actually level 3 illusionist with 240 health. Maybe I should have brought stronger characters. Um, so Maria the Fireblower. That was not what I meant to do. Uh, I was trying to check his stats. Ooh, 28 damage. This is going to be a tough battle. Um, I'd like to keep Grok's morale nice and high. So Eugene has a lot of different abilities. Mirror image... 
Oof, I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat this battle, but we'll see. 20% chance to reduce the dodge by 10%. Do I taunt? I think we try to clear off enemies. Every enemy we can take off the battle is one enemy that isn't making an action against us. So if we just focus fire and use our heals judiciously, I think we'll be fine. So the electric attack really doesn't do a lot of damage here. Kind of wish I didn't have this character with me now. However, there's still a 30%, 50% chance to stun Eugene. This might be her utility for the entire game. It's just giving me a chance to block this guy's ability to act. So a 33 to 42 damage. Very low chance that we actually get a kill here. Yeah, let's just set up for a kill next round. 41 critical hit. Jesus. Can we get this kill? 14 to 17, no. What about fire attack? Not targetable. The mime is pretty vulnerable to her damage. Eugene's gonna get to act here. If he hits my clown, I'm gonna be sad. I think this is where the game truly stops pulling its punches. Is on this final battle, so he's doing that to my card. Okay, a little bit of damage and a heal. Okay, that's actually annoying. That might put him into the... Uh, Grok. Grok, go ahead and use this heal item. And then also do Clown Care. Yeah, they're hitting Grok, but Grok can tank it reasonably well. Let's go for the stun on this guy again. He's resisting. I don't like the resisting. Okay, this is a guaranteed kill if I hit. Perfect. First kill. Doing an abstract bow. Yeah, Grok is taking damage. I think it's because he's marked. The enemy does actually focus fire. It seems like they're at least a little bit intelligent. Um, let's do another fire whip on this guy. Or fire ring, rather. So we could set up burning damage. Oh, big AoE damage. Can you get this kill, Grok? But then he will act. So I need to use a healing item on Grok. And then to get this kill to reduce the number of actions the enemy is taking. And then move him forward into the fire again. So he's calling for help. He's dodge and devotion is boosted. Let's keep trying for the stun. I would love just one stun on him. Resist again. That is a... So to put that in perspective... Um, to roll negative on a 50% chance three times in a row. That is a one in eight chance, right? Is it? If you multiply it, yeah. 12% chance of that actually happening. So we're getting supremely unlucky. Now, what if I did a big hit here? Honestly, I'm too scared to make gambles. So I'm just going to make safe plays because the sheer amount of damage that the enemy team can output is kind of scary. I can't do a fire attack. Reduces all damage suffered. Purge. You don't have a negative I could just do a fire attack, bring him down into more reasonable kill range, and we missed. That's devastating. Ooh, stunning Grok is painful. What is this? What the hell is this? Excuse me? Enter a stance. Calls another park keeper. Next turn. No! I was trying to click on his portrait. Well, we get the kill here. And we brought the master to the front line. So what are his abilities? He can call for help. Or maybe that's locked, it seems. I think we do want to just clear off enemy units off the battle. So we'll just do a fire whip, have a chance to set him on fire. He resisted it. Jesus. That AoE damage is devastating. Yeah, I think I can get him off the battle. If I just get him off the battle, it'll make my life easier. Let's do an electric attack. It actually only has a chance to kill, so I'm going to use a lock throw. To guarantee the kill. Balthazar is going to drink a cola. I don't think I can afford to take risky attacks on him. I think I have to take as much guaranteed damage as possible. He might get a kill. Depends on the actions he takes. 30% chance to deal extra burn damage. It's honestly our best bet. Just get... I think we can beat him. Unless he has like some super uber powered ability that he's going to pull out here. Uh... What? What the fuck is this? He just duplicated himself? <laughs> what is this? I thought it, wait, I thought he summoned one health. Uh, makes a copy of himself at one health in every empty slot. Okay, that's painful. Well, at least we can use electric lightning to deal with this. We missed. I don't even know which one's the real one. Gotta be this guy, right? Yeah, it was him. Okay. Oh my god! Devastating, dude! Dude, the stuns are impossible. Need to get this guy off the field of battle, because he's getting way too many actions. Alright, Balthazar, if we... I don't think I can take a gamble. 
He might die next round is the thing. Like, my character might. Ah, oh, dude, I'm missing. You're joking. I wish I'd crafted more healing items. 30% chance to stun. You can't fail me again. Come on! Dude. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. I just lost all my cool characters. <laughs> Jeez, this game is way more brutal than I thought. Please be the right one. Oh my god, this is just devastating that I have to work my way through them. Bro! Oh my god. <laughs> what? Okay, this fight feels a little overtuned. I don't know. Was I meant to bring all level 2 characters here? It doesn't even feel like that would help. Um, yeah, I think I... I don't think there's much I can do here. Wait! Don't I get a super ability? Don't my characters get, like, super abilities? I don't think it matters. Did I forget about, like, my ubers? Let me check here. I might have missed an ability here. I might have forgotten that my characters actually have specials. Do they not have specials? Am I crazy? Oh, well, ironically, I think I should flee, but I, I don't think I can. I think this is him. So I just need to hit him. I think I win. Oh my god, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I actually beat the cost me a lot. But yeah, like, so... That is Cirque. This isn't the circus mechanic. Uh, electric. Why am I bleeding? Uh, sorry, Circus Electric, which um, is a really, really brutal, difficult, Dark Soul, or not Dark Soul, sorry. Um, it's like Darkest Dungeon, kind of very reminiscent, um, but a really cool aesthetic, and it's really, really fun. I think maybe some of these guys died, I don't know. Um, but we had a rough time with that battle. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a storyline. But that is the introductory chapter to this game. I wanted to play through the whole thing, so you got a really good idea of it. Did my characters actually die is a question. Some of them might have... Maybe they lived. <gasps> I have Eugene now. Oh, interesting. So this guy actually joins me. So it looks like your characters are somewhat expendable, which kind of sucks because I wouldn't like... I would rather they weren't. <laughs> well, what I mean is I would rather they wouldn't die. So upgrade your workshop and invent a new super skill. Where is my workshop? <gasps> the workshop is over here. So cool. Ah, this is where the super skill stuff was. So if I upgrade this... Now, I have access to Chain Lightning, Popcorn Cannon, and Brainwashing Machine. Let's see, so Popcorn Cannon, level 1, heals 20% health to all allies, ooh, or 80% chance to remove all positive effects. I think I would like the heal. So I'm going to invent the old Popcorn Cannon, set up your new super skill, boom. Ah, those are the super skills. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, we're through the tutorial, and now we're into the real game, but this is where I am, unfortunately, going to leave you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this first look at Circ Circus Electric. It's available, maybe early access, I don't remember exactly, but there will be links in the description. Go check it out. If at all, it was interesting to you. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!